This is Tom and Ben with Real Recovery Talk. In this episode, we're discussing, is it okay to drink non-alcoholic beer while in recovery? Do we want to give it a try? Do you want to give it a try? Let's talk about it. I'm Tom and this is Ben and we're with Real Recovery Talk. In this episode, we're talking about non-alcoholic beer. You may be in recovery from alcohol and think that maybe it's okay to drink non-alcoholic beer and we have a certain opinion of that. We definitely have a strong opinion on that. So um, let's talk about it for a second. You know, what, what is it that we're trying to capture from a non-alcoholic beer? Obviously, probably some sort of euphoria, maybe? I would, I would reference like a placebo effect. Um, you mentioned euphoria, euphoric recall. Are we not trying to capture the spirit of older days, right? Um, a lot of the times, there's so much more to alcoholism than just the alcohol itself. If we look at the lifestyle, the party, you know, we had some good times in social atmospheres. So is there the chance that we are chasing the euphoric recall and the good old days, so to speak? And how dangerous is that? Super dangerous, especially if you can't break free from that lifestyle. I know with we oftentimes reference drug addicts because a lot of uh, IV heroin user, there's more to it than just shooting up the drug. It's the whole process. And Ben, you can speak into that. Oh, definitely. We were talking about it earlier, Tom, where, for instance, if I'm on the, if I'm feeling dope sick and going through withdrawal, I'm on my way to the dope dealer. And just that immediate sense of relief that I know I'm about to have it, I actually start to feel better. And I imagine the same thing with non-alcoholic beer as well. You know, you get that sense of relief just the, the taste and the, the smell of alcohol, non-alcoholic beer, it's actually, they've done studies on, studies on it where alcohol alters your DNA. So just the taste and the smell can create a craving. You know, you put that in your body. Just, and it's also really important to keep in mind as well that non-alcoholic beers actually have generally about a half a percent of alcohol in it. So when it comes to alcoholism, if we look at it from a scientific point of view, you know, there is a physical factor involved. And alcoholics, whether you want to refer to the genetic side of it, you know, there's a bunch of science proving that different people have different genes. Um, Specifically, there's a gene called the allele 62 gene. And it's been shown, I I believe it's about 80% of the people in the world that have this gene are addicted to some sort of substance. So with with alcohol and, and the effect on your DNA, and that that craving that's created, you know, you're, you're really on a slippery slope there just by putting any alcohol into your body, you know, kind of closely related. We often recommend, well, we always recommend, I should say, you know, even if you're sick, cough syrup, getting cough syrup that's alcohol free, you know, it's that little bit can, can set the terrible cycle in motion. Have you ever been in a position to where you're 30 days clean and maybe you have a smell of something that, and I know oftentimes it's with mouthwash, Listerine in particular, it has, uh, it has alcohol in it. Now you can't really smell it because obviously it's masked with all the minty and the spearmint and stuff. But when you put that in your mouth and if you were to drink a little bit of it, there's alcohol in there. And so have you ever been in a position to where Maybe you're mouthwash, mouthwashing or something, and it gives you that slight like trigger. And that's the same thing that non-alcoholic beer does. And I think one of the differences, though, is I'm in not I'm just trying to clean my teeth when I rinse with Listerine. But if I'm gonna crack open a non-alcoholic beer, there's two completely different reasons behind that. Like you know, now I'm, I'm drinking a non-alcoholic beer because I can't give up the idea that I can't drink real beer. We're just going to call it that real beer versus fake beer. Actually, in treatment centers, just to hit home that point as well, too, uh, one of the contraband items is actually 
Listerine or mouthwash that contains alcohol. Um, you know, really, I want to hit home one more point as well that a lot of the times, you know, maybe if you're watching this video, you in particular have had consequences, a DUI, and maybe you're on some sort of probation. You have to take a breathalyzer or a drug test once in a while. There is enough alcohol and non-alcoholic beer that you can actually fail a drug test for alcohol. Yeah, that's interesting because you can do the same thing too with a poppy seed bagel. Did you know that? I did. I hate that. I always, I always hear that one. Oh, I, I failed for, I ate a poppy seed bagel this morning, you know, but the probation officer's not going to care. Right, exactly. A failed drug test is a failed drug test. Have you ever been in a position to where you're at a restaurant or somewhere of the like and there's a bar close by and you're new into recovery, maybe you have 30 or 60 days clean, and you just have that uneasy feeling that like not in your stomach that it's, that's the, that's craving. It's your body is, is used to, and your brain is used to having alcohol and, and it really wants it. So it's going to, you're going to have this uneasy feeling and you're going to be in a, in a more susceptible position to ultimately relapse. And you can't break free from that if you're going to drink non-alcoholic beer. You know, what's interesting too is very oftentimes we receive phone calls, people looking to get help, get into treatment, get into detox, et cetera. Well, the irony is, is that folks often think, hey, I'm, I'm going to treatment for my alcoholism and that's the problem, right? But what we actually come to find out as we enter into recovery is that we're, lo we're looking for a design for living. You know, and the fact of the matter is, is there's so much more to recovery than just not putting alcohol in your body. You need to completely, you know, we often reference people, places, and things. You know, I, it, it drives me nuts. I was actually talking to a group of clients earlier this week where I use the example, I, I had a gentleman come in and he, he's so excited. He's like, Ben, you're gonna be so proud of me. I went and I sat in my same bar stool that I used to sit in and all I ordered was a Pepsi. And I'm thinking to myself, oh my goodness, I'm supposed to be proud of you? Like you are playing with fire. You've changed every, you've changed nothing other than just not drinking for the day. Well, what's the saying about the barbershop? If you hang out in a barbershop long enough, you're eventually gonna get a haircut, right? Or your nails done. Yeah, pedicure, mani pedi. Not at my barber. No? Yours though. I'll introduce you to mine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Non-alcoholic beer isn't a good way to go. It's not a good outlet. Uh, you know, people think that, well, okay, I can't drink Budweiser, so maybe I'll have O'Doul's. And it's not the safe way to go. You're uh, you're you're not breaking free from the alcoholism that and there's many different things that tie into alcoholism. It's not just drinking this. It's, there's uh, the lifestyle behind it. There's the chemistry behind it. You know, the, the brain aspect of it. There's so many different things, the social aspect of it. We need to break free from all of that. So we're not tied to some sort of non-alcoholic beer, alcoholic beer, sex, food, drugs, whatever. Like we need to be okay without having these things because we all have, or maybe you have, and I'd be willing to bet that you do. If you're watching this, you have some sort of addictive personality. And so you can take anything to the point of addiction and doing it to the point that, to where it's detrimental. And we need to really focus on how we can break free from that. So we don't have to have crutches like this to get through the day. And I think that that's something that we really need to focus on and take time and invest in ourselves and invest uh, in the work so we can get to that point. I just want to hit this home too. We haven't just come out and say it. Over the years of me working in the treatment industry, I've literally seen dozens of cases with relapse that went into full-blown relapse that started with non-alcoholic beers. I've, I've seen it time and time again. You know, is it a common thing? A lot of people go right back to drinking the real deal, but I have seen dozens of cases that it start out, started out with with a harmless non-alcoholic beer with dinner. And next thing you know, back on that merry-go-round again. So it's safe to say, if you're in recovery, you cannot and should not drink non-alcoholic beer. I agree. 
That's it for this episode. If you enjoyed that, go to realrecoverytalk.com. There you can find a ton of other episodes with content just like this that's going to educate you everything addiction, everything recovery, and this is what we do. This is why we do this to help people like you get educated and ultimately live a free and prosperous life. Right, Ben? Absolutely. Joyous and free. Joyous and free. Yeah, man. All right. See you later.